Hey everybody. Today we're doing something a little different. Today we're meeting up with a good buddy of mine. You might know him from the YouTube channel Florida Trailblazer. And I believe he's being joined with 21st Century Expeditionist. So today should be pretty interesting. I'm excited. Uh, we're going up to a wilderness area near Wakaiva. And uh, we'll see what we can get into. Alright. Hey guys, today we're doing something a little different. Like I said earlier, I'm hanging out with my good friend here from Florida Trailblazer. You might have checked out his YouTube channel. This is a good buddy of mine from uh, 21st Century Expeditionist. And today we're going to go and explore some Indian mounds. Uh, you guys have anything you want to add? Yeah, it's a beautiful preserve here. Um, lots of history and plenty of places to roam. So looking forward to getting out there with you guys and checking out some of the sites. All right, sounds good. Anything yeah, there's else? nothing like being out in nature. Yeah, nothing like it. <laughs> this is a uh, stage fright. What is this? What is this? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Early in the morning, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We it is pretty early, so nice and hot already. Yeah, it's already hot. So I say we get moving. What do you say, guys? Let's get it going. All right, let's roll. Here we are walking along in the wilderness here along what used to be a logging tram. Many years ago these areas were very uh, popular for logging. <coughs> so Jeremy, you want to tell us more about some of the trees they would log out? Well mainly in this area they logged out the big cypress trees that could live up around 4,000 years or so. Some of them they say were eight, nine, even 12 foot wide, according to some of the loggers' descriptions of them. You can see the stumps that are left behind out here as well. There's a lot of them here. They logged in here in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, mainly out of the town of Markham and Ethel. But also there's, uh, the main wood they brought out of here were the cypress and also base wood. They would use the base wood to make cigar boxes. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys having this knowledge of these areas. Yeah, I'll come out, personally, I'll come out here and just enjoy, oh, this place is really nice, but I don't know anything about it. So that's why I appreciate you guys' channels, because you guys really bring forward that, that, extra, that extra bit of flair that people really look for. And why are you out here? And it's like, well, I'm out here to explore the history of it, so. Yeah, but we also enjoy the wilderness as well. It's, it all comes together for me. When I'm out here, the, the wilderness and the history, it's, it's all one to me. Yeah, there's a lot of history in these parts. Native Americans used to live along the river here, the, the run, the Wakaiva River. Mm -hmm. Part of the freshwater Kamukwa Indians. They're not sure exactly which tribe they were, but approximately during the, around the time of King Arthur. Oh, wow. Uh, was when the uh, natives According to archaeologists live in this area. Looking around here on the mound, you can see some traces from the natives. Here are some shells and pieces of pottery fragments. And if you look over here, there's even an animal bone, it looks like, sticking out of the mound. Yeah, what's, 
What's interesting, and maybe Jeremy, you can shed some light on this, is the different uh, types of pottery you see on these mounds. Like here, these are smooth, but some of them are textured. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm no expert, but you had different periods of history, and I believe these mounds would be considered part of the Orange period, and which was a period that was thousands of years ago, but uh, you can see this is probably a plain type, but you can't always tell because you get erosion over time and it wears the uh, texture off. But you can see this over here is textured. So the Indians had culture, different time periods um, in art, uh, kind of like you had in Europe where the art would change over time. The Indians experienced cultural changes as well. Yeah, this textured piece right here is indicative of a creative type person. And if they weren't a creative culture, um, they would make things just for for utility purposes. This they decorate it because they want beautiful things to surround them. They're they're, they're happy to make things look nicer, look look a little um, more. Um, what do they call that? Uh, artistic function, you know, yeah. functional art, you know. And you know, textured pottery like that would be, like I said, indicative of that. Hey, check this out. We've been tromping around through these woods for about an hour and a half looking for this, this other mound. And these are really hard to find. Uh, the only way that you can do it is go off trail and get lost. And uh, this is really, really fascinating because this, this mound doesn't look like it gets you know, explored very much. We come across this little spot right here and it's illuminated like something out of Indiana Jones. And I kid you not, there are pottery shards just everywhere in here. And these are laying here just like this. You can see the, the curvature in this one. These are literally right on top. It's amazing. Yeah, and there's, there's shells everywhere. And it's neat because you can see the layers of the shells uh, here in the mound. If you look closely, you see deposited everywhere. And there's an interesting rock you saw as well. Yeah, this here, I guess, is a piece of limestone, I guess. That's been, you can see where they've flecked off pieces of it to what I think look exactly like flint napping. You can also see little bits of crystal in here on either side of here. And uh, this is actually an amazing find right here because it's kind of hard to find really nice um, flit napping rocks in this area. So this is really, really cool. All right. Let's go check out that other thing. All yeah. Right. something that we're kind of debating right now as to what this actually is and you're saying this could very well be a dugout canoe well the fact that it's cypress wood which is certainly the kind of wood they would use to make a dugout canoe the fact that it's hollow on the inside the side could have collapsed in over time mm -hmm. but we were just walking along here and saw it and it looked hollow on the inside and we said that you know, this could be a Indian canoe, but you would have there. Usually, there would be near a village or a lake associated with village, or an Indian mound of some sort. And sure enough, we walked a few yards this way, and there's a kitchen mid in there. So you can't rule this out. The archaeologists would come out here and do carbon dating. Of course, they're experts, and they would could probably tell by looking at it. Some of them, you know. But certainly, it could be if it's been here a long time and the side collapsed in. Mm -hmm. The Indians would have hollowed it out and they, they basically stand up in it and paddle along the river. 
Yeah, and like you said, it's right by that midden mound, so... Uh, it's That's the cypress good. wood. It could have been a cypress tree that the heart of it rotted out and the cypress tree fell over. You know? But the fact that it's right next to a, a kitchen midden, you can't rule it out. Right. But you can't rule it in either. You'd have right, to have right. an archaeologist come out here and look at it. Yeah, have to have some experts. But I mean, it really looks good. Like, the inside of it really looks like it had been, like, worked. So, and it's really straight, too. There's some area, areas on it that are really, like, like angular, you know? Well, yeah. So. Well, it could have been under... Cypress wood has a natural oil in it that resists termites, resists rot. So a lot of people don't understand that. Uh, cypress trees can live be 4,000 years old. And that's why they used to use it. Well, they still use it for siding and framing. Mm -hmm. On old houses where you'd get termites that would eat your framing and your siding. So cypress wood was an excellent choice for them. It, these, it lasts a very long time. Yeah, especially in these really humid and wet environments. Yeah. Awesome. This is pretty neat. I say we carry on. All right. We got Florida Trailblazer right behind me here, blazing trails with us. 21st century expeditionist leading the way. So it's been quite an interesting day. Uh, this uh, this trail is almost non-existent. There's so much damage back here from Hurricane Irma that is almost impenetrable. Yeah, it's not really even a trail. It's just sort of like a... Yeah, it was a logging trail at one point and, and now it's so overgrown and trees have fallen over on the trail that we've had to clamber over all kinds of deadfall. This is a... It's been a really tough trudge this last half hour, 45 minutes. Insane. Enjoying it though. It's, it's why we come out here. Guys, thanks for inviting me along today, man. It was a real honor to, to hang out with you guys today. Florida Trailblazer, 21st Century Expeditionist. And I'm just really excited you guys asked me to come out with you guys today. It was just, it was just an incredible experience. Those, those midden mounds were something serious, you know? Yeah, it was great to meet you finally. We, you know, we, we know each other online, but we never actually got to meet up and do an adventure together. So yeah. it's great to finally get out and meet you and explore with you guys, go out in the wilderness. It was a blast today, seeing the history, the beautiful places. The bushwhacking we did, just yeah. quite, quite an experience, and it's just something you take with you, you know, when we're done here, you look back on it, it just like such a great time, so thanks again, man, and I hope we can do more adventures I, in the future. I'm, I'm down for it, anytime, yeah. anytime. Yeah, and we got to see some rattlesnakes. Yeah, a couple of rattlesnakes, that was <laughs> yeah. incredible. Yeah. That was incredible. This guy right here spotted him, like, he almost stepped on well, you it. saw the first one, I saw the second one. Yeah, that was, I haven't seen a diamondback in a long time, and, and it's not one of those things, you can go out here all day long looking for them. And not see a single one, and that that was that was a real treat, especially for me. I appreciate that. It's yeah, I had a good time. So and uh, the pottery and and the, the midden mounds, and hopefully, hopefully we're right about that log. Maybe it's maybe it is a canoe. I don't know. Yeah, but um, that was exciting. You know, it's, it's definitely a mystery. I like those yeah. kind of mysteries. You just never know, but it was cool to see it. Yeah, that, that be there. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> like it's like wow. This is like this is where people you know yeah. live their lives and and every day. And well, we found the arrowhead too. That was significant because that was 
miles, probably five or six miles away from the, the midden. Mm -hmm. It's out here in the woods, so they, uh, an Indian out here hunting. Yeah. You know, it's just right there. And I, I guess uh, the Forest Service came through and did some cutting and kind of exposed some of the earth. But uh, yeah, that 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 whole historical part about today it really gave me the chills. You know, it kind of threw me way back into the past. You know, mentally, and I thought that was just just absolutely spectacular. It's a great rush. So, thank you, 21st Century Expeditionist. I appreciate you inviting me out. Yep. And and Florida Trailblazer. Yeah, I my pleasure, it. man. It's We're gonna definitely great. do this again. So, all right, guys, and. Uh, like I said, I appreciate it. Take care. And thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate your support. Check these guys' channels out. And I'll put the links in the description. And uh, you won't be disappointed. They do really good stuff. All right, guys. Take care. See ya.